This is the fourth and final part of our Sim Challenge IFR flight from Yakima, Washington to Astoria, Oregon. Click the link in the video or in the description for earlier parts, where we went through flight planning, getting our clearance, and departing. This video will highlight getting ready for and flying the instrument approach through landing. We're cruising at 8,000 feet, talking with Portland Approach, who have cleared us direct to our destination airport, Astoria. We're about 40 miles out, which is a good time to start thinking about our arrival. Let's start by picking up the weather. We set the Astoria AWOS into our COM2 before we took off, so let's turn on the receiver. This is the current weather information we get. It's been the same condition since we departed Yakima. With the wind still out of the west, we'll expect to be assigned either the ILS or RNAV for runway 26. This is a non-towered field, so we can request any available approach, but we'll stick to the ones the wind is favoring. Before long, we'll be leaving Portland's airspace and get the handoff. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, contact Seattle Center on 124.2. 124.2, Foxtrot Tango. With that new one tuned, we'll get ready to contact Center. This will be our final controller responsible for assigning our approach. We'll want to tell them we have the weather. If we had an approach request, this would be the time to advise that as well. Seattle Center, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, 8000 with the weather at Astoria, request the ILS runway 26 approach. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, Seattle Center, I have your request, Astoria altimeter 3010. Center telling us that they have our request essentially means we can expect the ILS approach, so let's begin briefing it. We'll pull up our approach plate on ForeFlight. Before diving into the details on the chart, let's talk through specific threats for this approach. You can use the PAVE acronym if you like to go through this. P is for pilot. I'm nice and proficient for these types of approaches and I'm feeling fine. I'm not fatigued. A is for aircraft. We have plenty of fuel. The avionics are well equipped for this type of approach and we don't have any in-op equipment. V is environment. The weather is IFR with a pretty solid layer beneath us. The bottoms are reported at 3000 so we should break out well in advance of the decision altitude at 264. The temperature at the surface is 10 degrees so there's no real worry about icing as we descend through the clouds but we'll keep a watch. The terrain is pretty flat, this is a coastal airport. There's one or two short obstructions on the approach course and the mist takes us out over the water initially. E is for external pressures. I'm under pressure to fly this approach correctly so I don't need to go back and shoot the whole video again, but we won't hesitate to abort if anything looks wrong. Let's look at the plate now. First in the top right, we confirm that we're looking at the ILS runway 26 for Astoria, which we've been assigned and the plate is current, which it is at the date of filming. The top of the screen shows a note on which we briefed prior to departure. It mentioned that the course reversal wasn't necessary if we're joining the approach at Zunab. So we'll keep that in mind depending on how we get our transition. The helicopter note doesn't apply. The in-op components table doesn't apply. We've already got a larger visibility minimum. We'll set the frequency for Unicom 122.8 into standby. We're still talking to center on the active frequency. The missed approach has us climbing straight out and then making a right turn direct to the Astoria VOR. Let's set that into our nav 2, 114.0. We're going to join the final approach course at Zinke. There's a hold in lieu of procedure turn there. It's required unless we ask for and get cleared for a straight in approach. The FAF is unconventionally high at 4,000 feet, which means we'll be on the final segment for a long time, 12.3 miles. In case of emergency, the minimum safe altitude coming from the east is 4,600 feet. Let's brief our landing. Here's the taxiway diagram. The FBO is on the south end of the field. We'll plan to land on runway 26 and exit left to get there, being on the lookout for the intersecting runway 14. Let's get our avionics set up. We'll push PROC and choose Select Approach, the ILS 26, and scroll to Zinke. We could change that transition later if we have to. We'll load it for now. We'll confirm that the points on the procedure match what's shown on the plate. Notice the hold after Zinke on the procedure. We'll need to clear that if we get the straight in approach. Now ATC gives us a turn. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, turn right direct Zinke. Direct Zinke, 8 Foxtrot Tango. We scroll to Zinke and hit the direct button then enter, flying our new direct course to Zinke. This is a non-towered field, we'll need to cancel our IFR flight plan ourselves. This can be done in the air or on the ground, and ATC will let us know our options. November 8, Foxtrot Tango report cancellation of IFR in the air on this frequency or on the ground via flight service. Roger, we'll plan to cancel once we've got the field in sight, A Foxtrot Tango. 
November 8, Fox Rat Tango. Roger, you're nine miles from Zinke. Cross Zinke at or above 5,000. Cleared straight in. ILS runway 26. Approach Astoria. Zinke at or above 5,000. Cleared straight in. ILS 26. 8 Fox Trot Tango. So we'll start our descent to make Zinke at or above 5,000. We've been cleared straight in, so we want to get rid of the hold on the GPS by pushing FPL, the cursor, then scrolling to the hold, hitting clear, then enter. We level at 5,000, cross Zinke, and make our turn onto the final approach course. The VOR receiver switches over to VLOC mode automatically as needed for the ILS approach. We can continue our descent now down to 4,000, the glide slope intercept altitude for the approach. We'll level at 4,000 and start watching the glide slope needle on the receiver. When the needle comes down and touches the top of the center donut, we can begin to configure for the approach. We'll bring the power back to 1,700, Lead some speed off by holding the nose up, add 10 degrees of flaps, and establish a nose down attitude for an 80 knot descent, looking for around 400 to 500 feet per minute. Now that we're established on the approach, we see the airport out there at the shoreline, so we let ATC know. Center 518 Foxtrot Tango has field in sight, cancel IFR. November 8 Foxtrot Tango, IFR cancellation received, radar services terminated, squawk VFR, frequency change approved. Squawk VFR, 8 Foxtrot Tango. So we put 1200 into the transponder, our IFR flight is over. We have the field in sight, so if for whatever reason we went missed here, we couldn't re-enter IMC without activating a new IFR flight plan. We'll switch over to the CTAF, which we had programmed in when we briefed the approach. There's a bunch of schools of thought on how to make radio calls at a non-towered field from an instrument approach. I like to keep things relevant for IFR and VFR pilots alike. So rather than say I'm on the ILS or I'm at a certain fix, I say something like, Astoria traffic, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is 11 miles east, setting up for a long final, runway 26, Astoria. The airport is pretty visual, so let's zoom in a bit as if to put the hood on and keep us referencing just the instruments. This is a long final approach, so the needles aren't that sensitive this far out, but get more so the closer we are to the runway. We're not using autopilot, a flight director, or any kind of automation, so we control airspeed with pitch and altitude or glide slope with power. The key to instrument flying, and precision approaches especially, is making small corrections and waiting to see that the correction is appropriate. We try to keep both needles centered. When one deviates, we make a correction and ask ourselves if it's still deviating, staying at the same degree of deflection, or is correcting. This way we can anticipate how and when to make our next correction. Somewhere along the line we'll make another call or two letting anyone know our distance. Again, we're in visual condition, so if it were busy in the pattern, we may consider breaking off the approach and joining from the downwind as the aim recommends. The decision altitude is 264, so at that point we'll take a look back outside and proceed visually down to the runway. After touchdown, we exit the runway off to the left just as we briefed, being careful not to taxi onto the intersecting runway, and we might make a call saying we're clear of all runways. So with that, our sim challenge comes to an end. Please leave a comment on what routes you'd like to see next, and maybe we'll fly it later on. As always, check out our popular ground schools, including IFR and others, at flight-insight.com.